Time now for my daily interview series, Money Talks. And today we meet former Conservative Cabinet Minister Sir John Redwood, MP. After an early career in academia and finance, he was Margaret Thatcher's head of her policy unit in the early 80s. He was an architect of the Tories' privatisation programme. He entered the Commons for MP for Wokingham in Berkshire in 1987 and challenged, famously, Prime Minister John Major for the Tory leadership in 1995. He's since remained a leading voice on free market economics, Brexit, taxation in Parliament and beyond. And in recent weeks, he's backed Liz Truss to become Prime Minister and now he is widely tipped to make a dramatic return to government. So here he is, Sir John Redwood, my latest guest on Money Talks. Sir John, great to have you back with me here on The Money. We recently did a Money Talks together, didn't we, back in May? But given what's happening, we thought we would get you back on the show. I'm shocked but not surprised by this off-gem energy price cap. Your party's taking a lot of stick today for having not announced anything to coincide with this price cap. I'm sure there are good reasons why. What would you do, John Redwood, if you were now in the Treasury to try and reassure worried households? Well, I'm not in the Treasury and there have been no decisions made about who is going to be in the government. Um, I think Liz Truss should win. The opinion polls are likely to be reasonably accurate, but we need to wait and see who the new Prime Minister is. But it's very clear that both the leadership candidates are saying, um, were they to be Prime Minister, they wish to have a second package. And it's not right to say the government has done nothing. The government put forward a big package in advance of um, this immediate increase coming in in October. And so people are getting £400 each for house, each household off their bills. People on low incomes are getting support of up to £1,200. Uh, there are going to be all sorts of adjustments on council tax on, on the more moderately priced properties and further action will undoubtedly be taken, and I'm sure it will be a prime task of either new incoming prime minister and government team uh, to go through the numbers again in the light of the fact that the um, amount of money has gone up compared with the original estimates and in the light of the fact that it could go up more uh, in three months' time after this latest review, uh, and they will look at the numbers and decide what is the best combination of tax reductions and targeted help to get people through the winter with dear energy bills. So, John, you're a very financially astute person. As anyone who's followed your work over the years, they can watch you and I discussing financial issues on the GB News YouTube channel. That's already had thousands of views. In general, I know I don't, I, you don't like oversimplifying things. In general, should the government be giving money to households so they can meet these higher fuel bills or should it be giving money to the energy companies, the energy providers, the customer-facing energy providers, so it can allow customers to pay less? Or it should, be a, should it be a mixture of the two? Well, I think it should be a mixture of tax reductions. I, mean, I obviously agree with the Liz Truss analysis that, first of all, we need tax deduct uh, reductions so that people can keep more of their own money, hence the national insurance reduction she's proposing. And we need to take some of the taxes off energy, which helps all energy buyers. She's itemised the, the green taxes. Rishi Sunak has now come round to the idea of at least temporarily getting rid of that on fuel as well. So you can have a series of tax measures that both give people more spending power, they keep more of their own money, and directly reduce the price of fuel, which has a, a favourable impact on inflation. And then you've got to take care of those people who don't benefit enough from those tax cuts and are on very low incomes, uh, who are really going to struggle with the bills. And, and that's where um, universal credit and other um, direct payments to people is appropriate, targeted payments of the kind that we've already seen, which will need to be beefed up over the winter. So you wouldn't support a scheme that the energy industry is trying to get off the ground where the government gives them money and then uh, customers pay higher bills in future years in order to kind of smooth out the hit on households? Well, I'm sure any incoming government will look at that and, and will uh, take an intelligent interest in it. The difficulty with that kind of scheme uh, is how you make sure that you don't overspend, how you make sure 
is not too tough. So you bankrupt companies and you make sure that you don't allow them to make profits at the expense of the scheme. So there are more variables than simply making it cheaper to buy fuel by cancelling some of the taxes on fuel um, and or letting people keep more of their own money so that they've got some extra money to spend, uh, including on the fuel bill. And I do think we now are into the territory of having to fight recession as well as inflation. I think you and I talked about this in prospect. I think now we've clearly reached that crossover point where the establishment forecasts as well are saying that the evil of recession is arising for quarter four of this year, not the current quarter or quarter three, uh, and well into next year. And so it's good to take action like allowing people to keep more of their own money, uh, which can make it easier for them to pay for the fuel and therefore leave over a bit more money for things other than fuel to avoid a major collapse in demand uh, for non-fuel items. Just briefly, John, before we go to the break, there is no assistance in particular for business. The energy price cap doesn't apply to business. A lot of business leaders I know and others are saying that VAT should be scrapped for business fuel. Their energy bills, they pay 20% VAT. We're out of the EU. You supported that. Should we now scrap that on energy bills for business to give, you know, hospitality businesses, shops, laundrettes a chance of surviving? Well, I think um, cancelling VAT on fuel, at least temporarily while uh, fuel cost is elevated, uh, is a serious runner and, and any new government team will want to look at that. And I certainly agree with you uh, that um, there are a lot of businesses under a lot of pressure. And I think that must be part of a comprehensive package uh, to explain to industry what help might become available and what can be done about the excessive fuel bills that will directly now lead to some closures, as we've heard recently with a fertiliser plant. So, John Redwood, it's been great to talk to you today. Thanks for taking time out of your schedule. We look forward to having you back on the money very, very soon. John Redwood there, former Tory Cabinet Minister, MP for Wokingham, and potentially a future government minister.